Hey there! In this video, I'll explain everything you need to know about Kubernetes services networking. I'll walk you through a range of options and why you might choose one versus another, depending on your needs and specific cluster environment. We'll start with drawing the basic networking for a couple of Kubernetes nodes. The details depend on which CNI plugin is being used. To learn more, you can check out the other videos in this series to understand how things fit together across a range of different networking options. In this video, I'm using Calico as the example, which connects the pods to the host using a pair of virtual Ethernet interfaces and sets up the Linux kernel to act as a simple virtual router that connects everything together. Let's begin by looking at how pods access services using cluster IPs. Cluster IP is a virtual IP address used to represent a service. Kubeproxy programs the Linux kernel to intercept connections to cluster IPs and load balance them across the pods backing each service. So for example, if service 1 is backed by pods A and C, then when pod D tries to connect to the service's cluster IP, the connection is intercepted and using a technique called NAT, Network Address Translation, the destination IP is changed from the cluster IP to the chosen backing pod's IP address. Importantly, the source IP address is not changed, so pod A sees pod D as the source of the connection and any network policies that apply to pod A behave exactly as expected. The return traffic associated with the connection gets the NAT reversed on its way back, so the client pod is unaware any of this happened. Next, let's look at the most basic way to connect to a service from outside the cluster, service type node port. A node port is a port reserved on every node in the cluster to represent a service. Qproxy programs the Linux kernel to intercept connections to node ports and load balance them across the pods backing each service. So for example, if an external client connects to a node port on any of the nodes in the cluster, the connection is intercepted and the destination is natted from the node IP and node port to the chosen backing pod IP and service port. But if only the destination was natted, the return packets from pods on other nodes would go directly back to the client, which wouldn't know what to do with the packets because they aren't coming from the node and node port it thought it was connecting to. So to avoid this issue, node ports also nat the source IP address, changing the client IP to the node's IP. As a result, the return traffic is routed back to the original node where the NAT can be reversed before returning to the client. One downside of this approach is that Kubernetes network policy applied to the backing pod cannot limit access to specific external clients because the client IP is obscured by the NAT. If you are a Calico user, then you could apply Calico network policy to the nodes themselves to limit access to node ports if you had a strong requirement to do so. Another way of accessing services from outside the cluster is to advertise service IP addresses using BGP. This requires an underlying network that is BGP capable, which typically means an on-prem deployment with standard top of rack routers. Calico supports advertising cluster IPs or external IPs for services configured with one. If you're not using Calico, then Metal LB provides similar capabilities that work with a variety of different network plugins. With the simplest form of service IP advertisement, Calico advertises the entire cluster IP address range from every node in the cluster. Just like with node ports, QProxy intercepts external connections to cluster IPs, natting them to backing pods, including changing the source IP address with the same implications for Kubernetes network policy. The return traffic is routed back to the original node where the NAT is reversed before returning to the client. This routing behavior can be changed by setting the service's external traffic policy to local. In this case, Calico will advertise the individual cluster IP from any node hosting a backing pod for the service, and QProxy load balances to local pods only. In addition to reducing the maximum number of network hops, the source IP of the client is preserved so you can use Kubernetes network policy to limit access to specific external clients if desired. It's worth noting that when using external traffic policy local, the evenness of the load balancing becomes node and network topology dependent. For example, if we add a second backing pod to node 1, 
the network still load balances traffic equally across the two nodes, which in turn means that the two pods on node 1 each receive half as much traffic as the pod on node 2. In many cases you can use pod anti-affinity rules to ensure even distribution of backing pods across your topology, but this does add some complexity to deploying the service. Another alternative to consider whether you're using node ports or service IP advertisement is to use Calico's eBPF data plane, which includes native service handling without the need to run kube proxy. This preserves source IP to simplify network policy and uses DSR, direct server return, to reduce the number of network ops for return traffic. It provides even load balancing independent of topology with reduced CPU and latency compared to kube proxy. The final service type I'll cover in this video is Load Balancer, which dynamically allocates an external IP for the service on a network load balancer outside the cluster. The exact type of network load balancer depends on your cloud provider. The network load balancer then distributes connections across the nodes using the service's node port. Most network load balancers preserve the client's source IP address, but because the traffic still goes via a node port, by default, the backing pods themselves do not see the client IP, unless using an alternative to Kube proxy that preserves the source IP, such as Calico eBPF's native service handling. As with service IP advertisement, this behavior can be changed by setting the service's external traffic policy to local. Network load balancers that support this option will only load balance to nodes hosting backing pods for the service, and Kube proxy will only load balance to local pods on that node preserving the client source IP all the way to the backing pod, at the cost of potentially uneven load balancing. That's all for now. Be sure to check out the next video in this series, which covers Kubernetes Ingress, building on top of Kubernetes services to provide access to services from outside of the cluster using application layer load balancing. I hope you found this video useful, and thanks for watching.